on both channels. Well, hello, my dear friends. Best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov. I am a research entomologist, beekeeper, and teacher. And this is my channel devoted to insects and science of about insects entomology. So today we will be talking about insects, very special one, not about polite, cute, and adorable insects, as you may think, like some insects in collection. You do like collect maybe butterflies, maybe you do collect moths. You enjoy tiny, cute insects, which are very beautiful, which are very looks very nice, adorable, lovely, and they are not dangerous at all. But today we will be talking about wasps, about bees. Not about butterflies, not about moths, but about slightly dangerous creatures, which are wasps. What kind of wasp we can say? Actually, you can see here in front of me, op opposite of me, the poster with big insects of big size, but which are originally very small, very tiny, like plankton, and they are parasitic wasps of a family calcid wasps, calcidaidae. So these are calcid wasps, which are parasitoids of different another insects. So the larvae developing inside eggs, larvae, pupae, even sometimes adults of another insects. Sometimes they are even predaceous on another creatures. Sometimes they are parasitizing not only insects, but also spiders. We can eat even nematodes. Larvae can eat. But adults were eating just nectar on flowers. So they are phytophagos and they are parasitic because they are developing inside or on the body of other insects or in other invertebrates. So these are parasitoids. Parasitoids were very special. They are killing the so named host, host, a creature which are uh, feeding on. This can be either larva of insect, adult of insect, or maybe another invertebrate like spider or eggs of spiders, for instance. So that's why they're parasitoids. So one group of insects, they're also called parasitic wasps. They're not so big wasps. Some of them can be even big, 20 millimeters, even 30 millimeters with long ovipositor. So, especially in the family Ichneumonides, in other superfamily Ichneumonide wasps, which were all belonging to the order Hymenoptera. And we will be talking about not about bees. These are also belonging to Hymenoptera, but they are not parasitic. Some of bees can be parasitic, but majority of them were feeding on nectar and some other substances. As I told about parasitoids, I can show you this atlas with these photographs, not with photographs, with drawings, drawings of these same parasitoids, and they are called parasitic wasps. As I called you before, we are developing either on the body or inside the body of egg, larva, pupa, or even adult of the host subject which we are feeding on. So we are quite a lot of them. This atlas about different beneficial insects which are living, especially in fruit orchards in Ukraine. In, in other countries. But what about wasps? To talk about wasps, I use this book of Gary Bolton and Jan Gold, The Hymenoptera. The Hymenoptera. And here I will cite some sentences about wasps because they are belonging to a separate group, not parasitica, Hymenoptera parasitica, as I said, but parasitoids. But by belonging to Hymenoptera aculeate, aculeate, which can be stinging insects. 
or ac accumulate. Accumulate, this is a group of Hymenopterous insects, and we changed function of Hymenopterous function of ovipositor from a placing device. Ovipositor was a placing device to the development of a special venom transmitting weapon as a sting for hunting, defense, and aggression, and for, for the stinging. So have you been stung by the sting of wasps? If you have been, so you know it, it's very unpleasant. So all accurates were use special sting for defense, aggression, and for, for the sting. In many, many super families and families of wasps, predaceous wasps, which are included to a group of aculeate. So we called about parasitica, hymenoptera, which include parasitica and phytophagus wasps, parasitoids, and here aculeate wasps. They can sting, but they also lay eggs for sure. The function of location, the egg has developed on the apical gastral segments. So the eggs emerge at the base of the sting and does not pass through the it doesn't pass through the ovipositor or the sting. So that's why in parasitica egg is going through the ovipositor and in aculeate creatures, wasps and bees egg laid just at the base of a sting. Which superfamilies included are included in the group of aculeate? These are different groups of wasps. These are chrysidae wasps, chrysid wasps. And we have also Vespoidae, Scoliaidae, Formicaidae, and Pompilidae and Opoidae bees, Betilidae. And how do they name in common na names? They have very special names for sure. Ap Apida, these are bees, and formicida, social wasps, these are vespida, mud wasps, eominida, rabi wasps, or cuckoo wasps, chrysidida, they stealing the food from another wasps and bees. So we can be considered as cuckoo wasps and velvet wasps of a family mutilide and for sure spider wasps of a family pompilide. Not all families have common names like bitilide, bitiloide, super family. We can say just bitilide wasps. This book has a wonderful morphological pictures of different groups of wasps. But today we will be talking about them and I'll show you some groups of wasps in the collection, not only bees, but in the collection also some wasps. And by the way, some wasps were not only dangerous, some of wasps included in uh, some special manuals and books for their defense, for protection, yes, and some wasps were not defending themselves because of a have sting. Human beings just saw society, different different countries, communities should defend, should protect some wasps, which are rare, some and disappearing species. For instance, in Ukraine, there are three editors, edition, three editions of Red Book of Protected Species. Of insects. This is the third edition of Chervona Kniga Ukraini, Red Book of Ukraine of Protected Species of Insects and Invertebrates and some vertebrates as well. But I will talk about fish and so on, birds and so on. About wasps. What about wasps? Here, for instance. In the beginning of the list with insects, we have two species 
This is a sapiga, yellow colored, and this on the ground. Here, this is a mammoth moth. Oh, scolide, scolia wasps. Sapiga belonging to the family Sapigide, and it's distributed in the south part of Ukraine and in Crimea. Sometimes was found even near Dnieper River. I have not seen the Sapiga myself in the nature, only in the collection here. And Scholar Quadrimaculata, protected species included in a red book, which has a wide distribution through Ukraine. Scholar Halbula, Scholar Kluhe, Kalpa Kluhe. Dicelia zanalis of a family with spider. The same social wasps. Dicelia were quite very rare. Sarantes abbreviatus, tauricus. Eumenes tripunctatus. Onychopterulus palasa. For some species, even where they have no good photo, no good specimen. So rare species. Only just drawing like this yellow picture of wasp, which is under protection of the law and included in the list of species in this book with protected species and disappearing species of insects. And here one is very interesting species, which I do like very much, which is quite rare, but which has very special name, Lara anathema from the Family Crabronida, which cannot, which is attacking this one, Lara anathema. Also, quite rare species, parasitic insect, which attack Rilla talpa, Rilla talpa, mole cricket, mole cricket. So, mole cricket is a quite a big one, big one species. So, you can imagine that this is Lara anathema is attacking mole cricket. Gorilla talpa, gorilla talpa, and laying eggs on adult of gorilla talpa under, under the ground. So Lara is developing under the ground and imaging on the next year. So, but these are parasit parasitic species of wasp which are making the nest for protection of the, the larvae. Parasitoids, we do not make like this species, we do not make any nests for their protection. Quite interesting that many wasps can be dangerous because of their possibility to sting, as we say, especially social wasps of a family, the Spidae and superfamily Vespoidae. For sure, you know, social insects like bees. Wonderful bees were here in the collection. They are bees. Here we have just the line of the queens, the line of drones, with big size, big drones, and line of workers of bees. But here we have also two lines of wasps, wasp of Espide and Scoliide, Vespa, Crabro, Vespa Crabro, European species of wasp. Very common one, which is stinging, which is hunting for another insect and sometimes can be dangerous if can be near the humans. Okay, this is another drawing with wasps here. Yeah. Big wasp, Scolide, Scolia maculata. Here, big was queen, males and workers of a European hornet, European hornet. And here, the lines of the drones, drones are very common for sure in the summertime, in June, in beekeeping farms. So that's why I collected it just for presentation for exhibition for during some lectures for students. What's about wasps? Why they are dangerous? Why they can sting? And who can sting? Well, 
you need to separate it. There are some solitary wasps. They can sting, but they sting their prey. They sting their host, which we are developing on. And they have different size. Sometimes killer, cicada killer wasp is pretty big one. Cicada of his family Crabronida. Cicada killer wasp quite a big of the same sizes, which is distributed in the United States and North America. I don't have it here. The killer wasp is killing cicada and bringing cicada to the nest. But social wasps were making nest for breeding the larvae. For that, social wasps, especially for family, the speedy like here, by making social nest. The family of scolide, like scolia moculata, solitary wasp. They never make a nest. They're hiding their prey under the ground, despite their big. It looks very dangerous because they're hairy and they can sting if you bring it in your hands and will push on the abdomen with your fingers. Scolia moculata, quadri moculata will sting you for sure, but not always, not always, like with the queen, like the queen of honeybee. Queen of honeybee can sting, but never sting usually, because she used sting only for fighting with another queen during her life cycle. The same scoliide wasps, we use the sting for their life cycle for stinging the prey or the larva of rhinoceros beetle. Rhinoceros beetle, you can find a rhinoceros beetle somewhere in a village, somebody. I was always thinking that rhinoceros are living only in a village somewhere under the mud, just near the, some uh, places where you use animals and straw. So in these places, under the ground, there are some larvae of big rhinoceros beetles. But even in Kiev, the big city with two million population, rhinoceros beetles are living in a sleeping areas, like in my area here, nearby. Sometimes I can collect in the summertime some rhinoceros beetles, but just by case, near the stubs of trees, near the basement of trees, because rhinoceros are feeding underground on roots of rotating roots of trees or cut trees and in may in beginning of june they're just catching imaging and flying around so that's why these solitary bees scoli they are flying only in the beginning of of june at least the middle of june in our area after the image after the emergence, no, before emergence, before emergence of rhinoceros beetles. In, initially, we can find because they're hatching early. Initially, we are, we are hatching males, and you can see near the stubs of trees just flying near on very low distance near the ground. Some wasps very actively sometimes were swarming and fighting, but these are not social wasps. For sure, these are scolia wasps, especially if they're swarming and fighting. That means they are fighting for the female, because they're males of scolia maculata. They do like fighting between them. Oh, we can see some questions like what can be advice about manual about insects in our area? Very good questions. For that, you can type some questions on YouTube, not on YouTube, where you can see stories for entertainment. You can find many books and download tons of books, dozens of books, even hundreds of books from internet. If you can search it properly with name with keywords, you can type keywords, and so. We Download PDF, download PDF in Russian, in Ukrainian, in English, in French, in German language, 
and internet will show you some websites with stock with libraries like Gutenberg library with English books and many other libraries in different languages where you can download free of charge, free of charge books about insect for identification, for identification and some atlases for entertainment. Yes, so quick question in English in Iraq. Yes, so this is the answer. Check internet, but about books, I had another video on my channel. So search books about and on entomology subject on my channel, and you can find long list of books which I can advise and websites where you can download. Because today we have a stream about wasps. So you have understood that we have social wasps like Vespida and solitary wasp like Scolide. And about Velutina, Velutina in Ukraine. Nobody knows about you, it, but I can show you. Not Velutina. Velutina I have in collection. I have in collection Velutina, but initially I show you how the social was living by social was this is European hornet and this is a small part of nest of European hornet which I just extracted from the nest and for the collection I did this pinned pinned workers and pinned queens of different specimens of Vespa crabro. I have a collection also of Vespa Velutina, which I got from France for collection dead specimens. And this is the question, how do they live? Social wasps were making the nest from the beginning, from the beginning of the spring and start the colonies going to be from the, just one individual, one specimen of a queen. Here, the biggest one, I have here several queens. Queens here, males, and here the big one, female queen. Other workers are also female, but they're not laying eggs usually. In the presence of a queen, they never lay eggs. In absence, some cases, Hymenoptera was can lay eggs, but this is exceptional situation. And also, they produce only males, but female lay fertilized eggs and they are developing in queens and they're developing in workers and not fertilized eggs developing into males males is are not stinging you can very easily take male in hands and i showed you already on my channel without danger because males has only genital males genitale and no sting all hymenoptera insects we have males with no sting. Uh, males are not stinging. All the others here, queen, and also workers of Vespa crabro, European hornet, are stinging. And how do they live? I show you. Don't worry about it. I show you not living nest at the moment, but I show you. The nest in the collection because I have a box with my wasps, which I extracted from the natural conditions. So you can see here, these are cells. This is a cellulose for foundation, as you can say. So foundation is usually part for honeybees, but this is paper foundation for European hornet. Here we the white cocoons of wasps and all of them were attached together in a big ball like that. And several layers like that have been joined together by separate small sticks. So, and they, they have been covered with layers of paper because European hornet and other type, and another species of hornets, they produce nest 
somewhere in a hidden place usually usually especially european hornet do like to hide somewhere under the ground underground place under the tree under the roof of house and up making special nest with several lawyers like this and the top of one this one was on the top has a special like roots like special sticks on the top for attachment to the roof everything has been joined together between them was a kind of a wasp space like a bee space was between them were like two sizes of wasps because they are moving between all these foundations between all these plates here all these cocoons because larvae developing inside these paper cells and i extracted them because they will be rotating but some of them dried so that's why they dried here and here you can see white cocoons silk silky cocoons inside paper paper cells size pretty big and this one is also just full of completely developed larvae and pupa i dried them under the sunshine and i keep them inside the box for protection against some beetles and some dangerous beetles which can eat it so that's why i'm very careful about it you cannot all keep it an open situation because some predator some saprophagous insects some beetles like anobidae beetles will come but dermistidae beetles and will feed on remnants of all insects here inside cells so all these cells produced from the cellulose from the paper and who is making paper wasps adults making the, this paper by chewing with them bandibles on the mouth parts they're chewing cellulose from trees from the bark of trees and making these cells all the adults workers drones and queens they're feeding on nectar and sometimes on pieces on the juice on the juice from meat and also workers were feeding on some juice from exchange with larvae because when larvae here on the pupa but when it was empty cocoon was empty and there was no cocoon larvae are sitting here and wasps are coming here inside bringing with a piece of food like piece of meat and feeding the larvae larvae exchanging with some extraction with some liquid some fluid from the mouth parts and happy wasps hornets were, were just consuming they're consuming this liquid from the larvae so they're exchanging following into a process so-called trophallaxis trophallaxis exchange by liquid exchange by food trophallaxis which is special also for ants trophallaxis exchange between individuals of ants in the nest of ants but here trophallaxis between larvae of hornets or wasps and other wasps and the adults feeding workers so workers are crowding here around they're bringing the food from another workers and feeding all larvae inside the cells all the construction is very complicated with different lawyers like that and it's colored all together like a ball like a big ball with different size with this size is like a normal saucer ball but sometimes for a big colony the saucer ball can be quite big even bigger which is especially characteristic for vespa velutina small asian hornet which we'll be talking later because in this nest i'm collected personally about 200 queens in one nest and five four five four and fifty hundred 
workers. So all colony was about 600 individuals, 600 specimens for whole pretty big colony of European hornet. For this, but this pavilutina nest can be even quite bigger like this size, huge size with weight up to 16 kilograms, 10 kilograms, so 16 kilograms can be for West Pavelutina. And here, these are remnants of paper, but these are remnants of cover and paper from another nest. And I show you this one. Hornets big wasp, but other small wasps like social wasp, like Paravespula, by making smaller nest. Yes. This nest also small, quite a small, but it was underground nest with this covering, covered with this paper. So I just open it. So this piece of paper with several layers of paper around. But also here, attached attach some plates, several plates, one, two, three, four plates, between them some sticks, stalks. And all this nest was just under the ground. By the way, is the apiary of my friend Vasil Priyatilenko. If you are interested in beekeeping, you can watch my video about beekeeping on my channel. We collected it just near the uh, beehive, just under maybe 30 centimeters under the ground, because I digged, I digged the soil and take it off very carefully because it was autumn time and all wasp already disappeared because in autumn time social wasp was spreading around in so in the search of hibernation place what does it mean as i said i will show you this small wasp of another species this is a vespa or vespa crabra european hornet and this is german yellow jacket so Paravespula germanica, Paravespula germanica, small yellow jackets. The small one, and I had another one, no. And some species are making very small nest with a little bit different structure. They are belonging to, to another group. So you see here, close in a close distance. Uh, I can show you like that. Yes. Enjoy the structure. Wasp. These are cells, paper cells, and cells with white cocoons. Backside attachment to the roof. This is attachment to the roof. And this one with dyed pupa inside, so you can understand what we have pupa inside. You can hear the sounds. There's a dried, like peanuts, like seeds, like lotus seeds. You see here, dried pupa and dried larvae inside this paper paper cells and inside this silky cocoons. So I started to tell you about life cycle. What about the life cycle of these wasps? As I said, the life of wasps start in the springtime. Just from the one queen, not one queen, but several, many, maybe dozens, hundreds, hundreds of hundreds queens. They're spreading everywhere around in a forest, in a field. And they're searching for suitable place to live. And they start with a colony from very small size, just from the one, two, three cells in a suitable place. For European hornet, it can be hidden place, as I said, under the ground or just inside the roof, under the roof in a hidden place. Yes, but during the summertime, 
nest is growing, increasing in the size and becoming pretty big one, as I said, up to this saucer ball or just even a bigger one, up to 10 kilos sometimes. But what happens later in the late autumn, in the, net, in the late summer, beginning of autumn, some drones and some new queens are coming from the cells because queen starts started to lay eggs fertilized and unfertilized. From fertilized eggs, some queens will be growing, other workers feeding them with a extreme quality of food. So they will be bigger size and they're queens. And from another cells will be coming from unfertilized eggs, which laid queen will come drones, males, males. So after that, we're hatching, they're crawling inside the nest, inside the social nest, and they're just coming out of the nest in the nature. And in many cases, they're mating in a very close distance near the home nest. I've seen it just myself near the nest where we were mating near the house infested with European hornet. So possibly we can mate even inside the nest, but I'm not quite sure about it. It's difficult to make such kind of careful observations. After mating, males can return back to the home nest or we can die somewhere in the nature. And queens, mated queens, were spreading, were flying out of the home nest. They are not returning back like, like honeybees queens. Honeybee queens after mating should return back to the home nest and will be about in situation with different consequences, maybe fighting with a previous old queen. But in this case, old queen do doesn't fight with new young queens and because the mated young queens were flying out of a home nest. They're flying out of a home nest and they're hiding somewhere underground between old leaves in the soil, or maybe sometimes in case in rotating wood or under the bark of trees. So after that, they're just sleeping. They're hibernating in hidden place, like under the bark of tree or in the soil. So an old queen inside this parental nest as a parent of all these many queens, like 200 queens or even more, 250, 300 queens can hatch from the big nest. The old queen just dying in the late autumn because low temperature are coming in September is good temperature in October, in November, cold temperature is low temperature. It's coming and cold becoming. So workers already not coming for the food. They're not exchanging by the food substances like nectar, water and so on. So that's why workers are dying slowly and queens from an old nest, mated or unmated, they're spreading around in the search of males especially fer fertilized and mated queens were flying around, flying outside of the nest and hiding for hibernation. This is about their fortune. But what about another species of this strange wasp? Yes, I promised to tell you about Vespa velutina. There are some species which are not usual for native areas for native areas. For instance, in Europe, we had 10 years ago, 15 years ago, only one species, Vespa crabra, European hornet. But at the present time, there are three species in, in Spain, in France, in Italy. We have another spe two species, which came just from the Mediterranean region probably from Turkish Republic, 
for some Asian countries. This one species, Vespa orientalis, the same size as European hornet, but more yellowish color. The same size, quite a big one, quite dangerous because also can sting. Very curious about different food because adults are bringing different food like meat of insects or meat of some animals, sometimes even meat of fish from sticks, from drying fish. So we are bringing meat substances and we are bringing also sometimes fruits for feeding, small pieces of fruits with juice of food, fruits. That's why we can, adults can damage some, in many cases, fruits like peaches, pears, apples, sweet pears, sweet apricots, so can make a damage. And we can bring also some honeybees because we can hunt for honeybees. But Vespa orientalis is native species for Turkish Republic, for some Arabic countries in Mediterranean region, but appeared in France two years ago. But another species, which is very important, Vespa velutina, small Asian hornet, appeared about already 10 years ago in France, and now spread already in Spain, in Belgium, even was found in Britain, North, Northern Italy, in Brussels, even some individuals were co collected in Germany. And during the current strange situation with the military activities of aggressor against Ukraine, there is a lot of activities in transportation and difficult control of transportation. So probably this Vespa Velutina, small Asian hornet can gradually, gradually move from the direction of Spain, France, Italy, Germany in the direction of Ukraine. So that's why we can suggest that in the nearest few years, Vespa Velutina can come to Ukraine and some other countries near Ukraine going to the east, coming to the Europe from the east, from the China probably, or from Middle Asia, or maybe from Cambodia, from Vietnam. We don't know precisely the origin in, in France. You can suggest it only. But later, coming back from France to Brussels, Belgium, Germany, and the next step will be Poland, Ukraine, and some other neighboring countries, especially aggressors country. For sure, because Vespa Velutina showed a very huge adaptation to the environment of living. And what does it mean? Very good adaptation of Vespa Velutina. I do show you just Vespa Europe, Vespa Crabra, European Hornet, which is living, as I said, in majority of hidden places. But Vespa orientalis is very adaptable species and can live in very dear, different conditions, can start the colony even in the presence of humans. For instance, if you have courtyard house and you have veranda, if you have a garden nearby, Vespa Crabra, this species, will never start colony just near the humans. We can start colony just under the roof. So it's invisible. The queen doesn't like the presence of humans. But Vespa Velutina, small Asian hornet, will start colony and has started to colony even very close distance near one meter near the humans on veranda, inside the car in the stopping area in parking in parking slot, under the under the car, for instance just somewhere in a children's garden, in, near the, some furniture in kindergarten, just outside and on the tree, just in the, at the basement of tree on very low way height or somewhere 
between the trees somewhere maybe in two meters over uh, the ground or somewhere on the top of tree or even somewhere just very high height for instance just maybe five floor buildings somewhere on the roof under the roof and on the roof and even on some electricity equipment as well just on very very high height so that's why vespa velutina is very adaptable species can not prefer but can adapt to different conditions even noisy conditions which another species doesn't like and can survive and can give very big colonies up to with size of colony up to 10 and 16 kilograms of a colony with larvae and adults so that's why in many countries such as spain france already in north italy well very strict quarantine conditions and very special fighting against this vespa velutina small asian hornet because small asian hornet is hunting for honeybees all this larvae inside which are there now of vespa velutina were feeding on different meat of insects and especially on honeybee bees on adults of honeybees because Vespa Velutina adults do like to hunt for adults of honeybees and they prefer to hunt. they prefer as it was not suggested but it was proven in many investigations where hunting for honeybees near the honeybee colonies near the beehives and they can reduce drastically the population of honeybees in apiary in your upper area really, if you are in Spain, if you are in France. And also they're stinging, they're very aggressive, very aggressive because they're making colony of a big size. So many individuals of Vespa velutina growing inside this colony, which can be up to 10 kilos, as I said. So that's why just by case, they are, can be irritated by humans. And they can be just by case, by uh, occasion, we can attack humans. That's why we need very strict control by pest control workers. So that's why a lot of special activities are organized in France, especially. So many volunteers, many commercial wasp hunters are fighting against Vespa Velutina. And continuation of this spreading is unknown. Probably Vespa Velutina can be spreading in new areas like Germany, Poland, Ukraine, other neighboring countries, and can attack honeybees in these areas in the nearest years. If you have some species of wasps which are looks like Vespa Velutina, which are dark brown, or you can say black with yellow tip of abdomen just put it in the box put it in a small jar in small box like that in small jar like glass like that dead individual or you can fix it in alcohol that dry individual is good enough you can send it to me to my institute of zoology of national academy of sciences you can find in the description of my channel my address in kiev or I can give you my address on Nova Pochta in Ukraine, so you can send it quickly for one day inside this glass jar for identification. I can tell you, is this Vespa velutina, small Asian hornet, or maybe another species at all. So don't you don't be worried about European hornet. European hornet is a natural native species in Ukraine and in Europe, but smaller Euro Asian hornet is invasive species dangerous invasive species and finally the continuation of the story of Vespa Velutina is going on why because in the last year 2022 specimens of Vespa Velutina just recently has been found 
in United States of America, in Georgia State. In Georgia State is Sabah. Beekeepers collected Vespa velutina, some individuals by case, and some strong quarantine, quarantine measures have been established in this area in Georgia State. But we don't know how it's spreading now, so it's under control. And let's see what's going on in the United States of America about Vespa velutina. Maybe this is the second species which been introduced to the United States because first third species. First one was European hornet. Second one is very aggressive. Two years ago was introduced Vespa mandarina, Vespa mandarina, giant hornet, giant Asian hornet of or killer wasp, killer hornet, murder hornet, Vespa mandarina, big size, but in general there are different sizes. I have some Vespa mandarina in my collection too. You can find it on my videos inside my channel. So size approximately the same for queen of European hornet, not to be one, but it has a special character, special um, coloration and special size of shape of body, special shape of head. So this very distinctively identified Vespa mandarina in comparison with Vespa crab row, with European hornet, with Vespa mandarina. Vespa mandarina is smaller. Uh, Vespa mandarina is a little bit bigger than European hornet, but Vespa Velutina is a little bit smaller, but more dangerous. So two, two nests of Vespa mandarina have been found near Washington state, but they were destroyed. Some papers of entomologists have been published about this case. And we hope so that species and this nest have been eliminated in this area. But you never know how they survived during the summer, during the autumn and cold winter, because they were very adaptable species as well, especially because they have a social nest and they're hiding during the hibernation somewhere underground. So queens can survive during the strong winter with cold, with frost, with snow. So let's Observe, let's watch for publications, let's watch for your apiaries. And you have some suspicion about Vespa mandarina or Vespa velutina in your area in the United States. Let me know, let know to your closest colleagues, entomologists. Send photographs on my email. You can find email in the description of this video. Or you can send individuals in a small plastic jar or last job to me to Ukraine for identification. You are really always welcome. Doesn't depend from the country where you are. If you are in the States, in Canada, you can send your samples for identification. If you are in Poland, Italy, in France, in Germany, in Britain, and you are interested, what is the species? Send it to me and I will give you identification of this individual and even you. Uh, in Ukraine and some neighboring countries as well, you can send sample for identification. It can be very interesting. Interesting from taxonomical point of view, from economical point of view, because the finding of invasive species, not natural species of hornets in our area, especially like in Ukraine, if you can find Vespa velutina, they can think this is a great disaster, this is a great danger about distribution of these species at the present moment. We don't know, but if you have some questions, send your samples on my postal address. I can give you it in my private email, or you can find it in the description of my YouTube channel. Be careful, you can see here the front link of my YouTube channel some links, Patreon link and other links. And you can find my work address at the Institute of Zoology of National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. 
And don't forget, I said about Patreon page. Patreon page, this is a page for donations. If you want to donate to Ukrainian Hornet for development of Ukrainian entomology about Hymenoptera, about parasitic and predacious wasps, you're welcome to send your donations on my Patreon or join YouTube channel donators, patrons on YouTube channel as well, different way. You can send it on my PayPal, small donation for a cup of coffee. You're really welcome. You are really appreciated your kindness. And don't forget to stand with Ukraine, support Ukraine, support not only me, but support Ukraine with some humanitarian help as much as possible or as possible. I really appreciate the help of my friends, American friends who have sent already some donations to support activities in Ukraine, volunteering activities in Ukraine. Thank you very much to Elizabeth and other sponsors. I really appreciate your interest in activities. Stand with Ukraine, support Ukraine, and don't forget, Ukraine will win. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention to wasps, to bees. If you have questions, suggestions, and comments, write under this video in comment section or send me private email on my email in the description of this video. Thank you for your attention. And my, my stream. Good luck. See you soon on my channel.